What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Simply Food by TY, and welcome back to my channel. Today, we are having a Q&A video where I'm going to be answering all of your questions in regards to my decision about having the gastric bypass. What is the gastric bypass? What's the difference between the gastric bypass and the sleeve? And so much more. So if you're interested, stick around and let's hop into it. Whipping up all of your favorite recipes Simply Food You should know by now that you're in for a treat Simply Food There's no other channel where you'd rather be Simply Food Seafood, pasta, cakes, and pies Sing and laugh and even cry Like, like and share and hit subscribe Simply Food by T.Y. Yeah. Alright y'all, so Let's just get right on into it because I got a decent amount of questions from you guys and I want to make sure that I try to answer as many as I possibly can. I am certain that after I have the procedure, I probably will do another Q&A video and some of my answers may change. Who knows? Um, and I might learn, you know, some new information that I can also give you guys. I'm sure I will have plenty of Q&As as, you know, the progression of post-op uh, surgery goes, as the months, years, so forth and so forth. Um, so I'm going to start off with the Instagram questions. I'm not going to say anybody's name because I'm not sure if people want to have their business out there like that. So I'm just going to read off the questions and we'll just go from there and I will answer them as honestly as I possibly can. Question number one. Are you worried about your breath technique after surgery? Okay, so this person is talking about me as a singer. I'm not necessarily concerned about it. This is the thing. I think when you've been a performer for so long, you kind of know how to utilize your breath support um, to the best of your ability. And although I'm a bigger guy, I have never really dealt with any breathing issues, especially when it comes to singing. If anything, I've always thought that me being a bigger guy kind of helped my voice a little bit. So I can understand why you would think that that might cause issues, but I'm not really concerned. And the good thing is, is that if for some reason, you know, breath support and all that type of stuff does become an issue, I have no problem with signing up with a vocal coach and getting it right on back together. Next question. Um, not a question, but I'm high key excited for you blessings. Thank you very much. Uh, next question. How long will it take for you to eat solid foods after the surgery? So this is a big question that I got asked a lot of times on Instagram. So. Post-op surgery, you have four different stages. Stage one is going to be just thin liquids, okay? So that is four ounces of 100% juice mixed with four ounces of water. You're gonna be doing that for quite some time. Now, I can't tell you if yours is gonna be a full week, if it's gonna be just three days, I'm not sure. I can't even say for myself yet because I haven't had the surgery. Um, but like I said, I will, like I'll do a whole nother set of this type of stuff to give you guys um, updates on how long mine had to be. Uh, but just know that there's four separate stages. So stage one is nothing but thin liquids. Phase two is when you start to incorporate your um, protein shakes and your multivitamins. If you didn't know, after you have a gastric bypass, not the sleeve, but the bypass, you are at a higher risk of having deficiencies when it comes to a lot of vitamins that you're supposed to intake. And that's because your stomach is much smaller, your stomach has bypassed um, directly to your intestines. So you're not gonna be able to absorb as much food, let alone as many vitamins as you need. So you have to take a certain amount of vitamins every day for the rest of your life so that you don't develop any, um, you know, deficiencies of any kind, which honestly, y'all, is not even really that big of a deal because most of us probably need to be taking vitamins anyway. Then you get into stage phase three, I should say, and that's when you can start to incorporate soft foods. Um, now, I'm sure down the line, I'll probably go into more detail about what soft foods I'll be eating. I haven't thought about it that far in advance yet. I'll get to that, of course, later on down the line. Um, but there's a very small list of things that you can start to have. And that phase lasts about three weeks. Now, by the time you get to stage four, okay, this is at the end of the journey when it comes to the healing process and all of that, 
at that point, that's when you can start to slowly add in a bit more solid food. But when I say little by little, it is going to be little by little. You can't just jump back in and eating steaks. You can't just jump back in eating ribs and all of that type of stuff. You really wanna to try to keep yourself on a clean diet for as long as you can. Also, because I, from what I'm understanding and from all of the research that I've done, that first six months or so is going to be like the honeymoon phase. That is when you are going to lose the most weight the quickest. And so if you continue on with eating very clean and you know healthier foods along with your exercise and all that, you're gonna lose a lot more weight a lot faster. So just keep that in mind. Um, so I would say all in all, that'll probably be about a month to a month and a half after I have my procedure is when I'll be able to eat solid food again. All right, what's next? As a post of RNY bypass person, what would be your goal weight? So this is the thing. I am not necessarily doing this because I've always had this dream of being a certain size when it comes to a number, if that makes sense. For me, it is definitely going to be aesthetically how I look. I'm not interested in looking like a thin piece of paper. I'm not interested in that. I don't want to be a twig. If you, if that's how you look and that's your life, bitch live, work it, okay? But that's that's just not how I envision myself. For me, I truly am doing this because I want to be healthy. Now, in order for that to happen, I'm probably going to have to lose close to about 175 pounds is about roughly about what I would have to lose. So that would probably put me around the 200, 225 mark. Um, I don't think that I wanna go below 200. But again, I'll have to, you know, do that as I go along. So let's say about 225. Are you gonna share your 21 day recipes? Okay, so this person is talking about my pre-op diet. So, for some of you guys that may or may not know, uh, prior to you having your actual surgery, you have to have a pre-op diet, which is called the liver shrinking diet, days before or weeks before your procedure happens. And as of today, July 23rd, I began my pre-op diet. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna have three protein shakes, breakfast, lunch, a midday snack, and then I will have an actual meal at the end of the day. Now, in regards to the meal itself, if it is a meat, it can be four ounces, I believe, with one to two cups of vegetables. And if it's seafood, it can be up to six ounces, I believe, with one to two cups of vegetables. You can't really, you don't, no snacking, none of that type of stuff in between. If you feel lightheaded along the way, because of course you're not taking in as nearly as much sugar as you normally would, um, you can have like a little bit of protein, like as far as like a like a slice of turkey or something like that. Uh, but I'm not going to be filming any recipes. I'm going to keep my stuff very, very straight to the point. A piece of chicken, a piece of salmon, broccoli, you know, or whatever vegetables I'm allowed to have. So I won't be making any particular fancy recipes. Um, in regards to my preoperative diet. Now, after my preoperative diet and when I start having solid food again, maybe somewhere down the line, I'll do like a few bariatric recipes, but we'll deal with that when the time comes. Next, uh, what's the lowest and highest you have weighed? Well, the lowest deer would be the day that I was born. <laughs> the highest uh, was 435, that was my highest weight. Uh, what was the first step to get approved for your surgery? This is a great question. So the first thing that you have to do, I would say before even talking to your primary care physician, you need to call your insurance company, okay? Because that is gonna be the determining factor on whether your insurance is gonna be paying for this procedure or if you are gonna be paying for it out of pocket. And for a lot of people, that plays a major part in this whole process you know what i'm saying like you can go from not having to pay a dime versus all of a sudden now you're paying upwards 25 30 000 something odd dollars to have this procedure and just to be very clear there are a lot of people that do not get approved and do have to pay for this out of pocket so you know this is not an easy decision for people to make mentally 
physically or financially. I just want to be very clear about that. Um, so that would be what I would say. I would contact your insurance company first, see if you're approved. Once you know that your insurance will cover it, um, then that's when you would talk to your primary care physician. And from there, the ball would trickle from there. Uh, what made you choose the gastric bypass surgery versus the gastric sleeve? This is also a fantastic question. So when I was doing all of my research and stuff, initially I was like, I'm going to do the sleeve. I'm going to do the sleeve. I want it to be easy. I want my recovery to be less time. I don't want them to be rearranging any of my intestines and organs and all that type of stuff. But what happened was as I started to do more research, as I started to watch more videos, as I started to watch testimonials of people that had the gastric sleeve versus the bypass, what I noticed is, is the success rate of people losing and keeping off the weight from the sleeve was not that high. Now, I will say this, there are a lot of people that get the gastric bypass that also gain the weight back but let me just put this out there really quick because I know that this is something that I've seen a lot in my comments already, which is kind of annoying because I can tell it's from people that don't know what the hell they're talking about. But I want to be very clear. Getting weight loss surgery, whether it is the sleeve, whether it is the gastric bypass, those are really the two main ones that they do nowadays. I don't know if they do any of that other stuff anymore. Um, these procedures are not a final answer and for how you're going to lose your weight. If you go into these procedures thinking that the procedure itself is gonna make you lose the weight and keep the weight off, you are going to be sadly mistaken, you are going to be embarrassed, you're going to be upset at yourself, you're going to regret that you probably ever got it done because you're gonna think, I can't believe I did all this and I've gained all the weight back. It is our responsibility as the patients to lose the weight, and to keep the weight off. And that is where the real work comes in. The surgery aspect is probably the easiest part of all of this. I'm not even gonna lie to you. Because once you get the surgery and you hear from that, that part of the journey is done. The real work begins truly after you get the surgery because you have to be the one to make sure that you are following your diet the way that you're supposed to. You have to be the one to make sure that you are doing physical training so that you can limit how much access skin you possibly will have. You have to be the one to make sure that you are working out. You have to be the one to make sure that you are taking your vitamins. You have to be the one to make sure that you are going to all of your follow-up appointments to make sure that you aren't developing any deficiencies. And what I've noticed is a lot of the people who have either gained their weight back, had medical issues after their surgery and all of that type of stuff are people that did not follow the steps that they were supposed to follow afterwards. Now that's not the case for everybody, but for a vast majority of people, that's what I've learned. People that have had the most issues after these procedures are people that did not follow the rules and did not do what they were supposed to do. So I would definitely say that I chose the gastric bypass because I did not want to take the chance at getting the gastric sleeve and not losing as much weight as I need to and then have to go back and get the gastric bypass. Because a lot of patients who had the gastric sleeve years down the line end up going back to end up getting the gastric bypass anyway. So for me, I was like, to hell with that. This needs to be a one and done. Let me get the big boy. Let me get the mother one. Let me get the 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 full to do surgery so that I can just get it done out of the way and just begin my new life. So that's the reason why I chose the gastric bypass over the gastric sleeve. So that's all of the Instagram questions. Let's head over really quickly to the YouTube questions. My YouTube family, what up to the Simply Foodies? All right, let's get to these really quick. Uh, we already answered that one. Uh, da, 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 da. I have several friends who have either had the sleeve or the bypass and had great success with the keto diet afterwards. Once you are able to upgrade to solid foods, what kind of diet will you follow? You know, I haven't really decided just yet. Um, once again, this is not um, 
This isn't like one of those type of things where you need to look at your life as a diet for the rest of your life. Because that really isn't what it is. You can have the things that you want to love. You can have a slice of cake. You can have a piece of a cookie. You can have a, a, a slice of pizza. You can have, a, you know, a burger. You can have all of the things that you loved. But it truly is about moderation and also understanding when you want to allow yourself to have that and how often you do. If you decide once a month, okay, you know what, this month, I think I kind of want to have a slice of pizza. You can do that. If you decide that there's one random day that you want to have, you know, a bit of a cookie, you will be able to do that. It's just about moderation. So I'm sure there's going to be different things that I will switch in and out as far as how I prepare foods, but I haven't like subscribed to a particular diet that I'm going to follow because I feel like it's going to be easier for me to stay successful if I don't approach this as a diet and just look at it more as a lifestyle change. What are some of the procedures that you had to go through to be approved for the surgery? So, I am actually going to be posting a full video of all of the things that I had to do prior to getting my surgery, <coughs> excuse me, as well as my surgery date. Um, because like I said, there were many, many steps. You have to have a lot of procedures done to make sure that your heart's okay, to make sure that your gut's okay, to make sure, you know, um, that your body can handle this type of procedure. So, I'm going to post a video very shortly. Um about all of those things. I'm gonna take you guys into the doctor's office with me. I'll let you know how they went afterwards. I'll also let you guys know what the results were from all of those tests and how that journey went. So stay tuned for that. Uh, what would be your plans to keep the weight off? You know, this is the thing. I, um, I am really looking forward to my life post the surgery. As you guys know, I have partnered up with Trova Trip, so I'm gonna be hosting a lot of international vacations. So, you know, me doing all of these adventurous trips and all of that stuff, it's really gonna give me the motivation to just keep pushing forward with my trainer, keep staying active and doing all of that. Because there's a lot of things that I've always wanted to do, but because of my physical nature, I wasn't able to do. So, you know, I just have to be the person to hold myself accountable for what I consume and how often I continue to stay active and, you know, making sure that I keep the people in my life and the atmosphere surrounding me and my journey as positive as possible. I don't want anybody in my life that thinks that joking about weight loss is funny. I don't want people in my life to think that, you know, antagonizing me with unhealthy foods is funny. Like, I just don't want any of those type of people in my life. So, you know, it's important to just make sure that you surround yourself with positive people that are going to keep you motivated along the way. That's what's going to be what's going to help me the most, I'm sure. Um, you will drop weight fast, therefore have a lot of loose skin. Will you have surgery to remove the loose skin? Also, are your very close life friends being supportive, yes or no? Okay, so this is a huge question. Everybody gets very concerned about the loose skin. This is also something that I had an issue with and something that I was very concerned with. Um, I will say for years, I put off having this surgery specifically because I was worried about the loose skin. And then I realized that that was the dumbest reason to be holding off from literally changing my life. First of all, it's my skin. Nobody else is responsible for my skin being as stretched out as it is but myself. That's something that I need to accept and something that I will live with. What I will say in regards to getting it removed, if it becomes hazardous, if it becomes an endangerment to me and my health, absolutely, I will get it removed. If it doesn't become a problem, I don't know yet. I don't know. I haven't gotten to that point yet. I don't know if I'm going to have a lot. But what I will say is this is um, that's one of those things where you shouldn't assume because you are a large person that you're going to have a lot of skin. You cannot base that off of what you're seeing on television or what you've heard from someone else's experience. Everybody else's experience is going to be completely different. It also heavily weighs on your age, 
your, um, I think also like your race, I also think plays a big part into it. The elasticity in your skin. If you're younger when you do this surgery, your skin's gonna bounce back a little bit easier versus when you're older. So it's a very individualized type of situation when it comes to that. In regards to my close friends being supportive, absolutely they are. Will it suppress your appetite? It will. Uh, there's definitely going to be moments when I'm not going to want anything to eat, but I also have to remind myself that I cannot starve myself. I just can't do that because that's not going to be healthy for me or for anyone that's around me because, honey, I'm sure my attitude is going to be terrible. Okay. Okay, the next one is I'm having the sleeve, but I'm scared because I take blood thinners. She was going to do the bypass, now the sleeve, but saying I only, I'm only i only going to lose 50 pounds. I don't know what to do help. My dear, that sounds like something you need to truly discuss with your physicians. Uh, I can't really help you with that one. Um, I'm certain that whatever your doctors decide in regards to which procedure is best for you, I definitely would just go along with whatever they say. Um, what are the side effects of the surgery? So, one of the main things that a lot of people talk about is the dumping syndrome. And it literally is exactly what it sounds like, dumping, going to the bathroom, people. Um, so, there are going to be a lot of foods that your stomach are not going to agree with. And especially from what I'm understanding, foods that are high in sugar can definitely trigger it really quickly. That is probably one of the main things as well as dehydration. Um, right after you come out of the surgery, that's the reason why that phase one is just getting in liquids because you're gonna run the risk of being very dehydrated. And it's gonna be very difficult to keep down your liquids or try to get in the full 64 fluid ounces that you need. You have to remember, your stomach is gonna go from being a normal size stretched out stomach to only being able to hold about one to two ounces of food and liquid, okay? That is a huge, huge difference, okay? From what you're used to. So it's gonna be very difficult trying to get in your food as well as your liquids. So I would say, from what I'm understanding, the biggest side effects are definitely the dumping syndrome and the dehydration. Um, one question that I was asked that I'm going to end this video with, that I'm going to read off of a full description is, what is the difference between the gastric sleeve surgery and the bypass surgery? So let me just read through this really quick. With the gastric sleeve surgery, the surgeon permanently removes about 80% of your stomach. What remains is sewn into a small banana shaped pouch. No other changes are made. So that means they're not doing anything with your intestines. They're not rearranging any organs or any of that type of stuff. Now let's jump into the gastric bypass surgery, which is what I'm having. With this procedure, also called a roux and wide gastric bypass, a small stomach pouch is created by removing or bypassing most of your stomach and the first part of your small intestines. The newly created stomach pouch is then reconnected to the remaining small intestines. The bypass part of the stomach is attached further down the small intestine, so it still provides the acid and digestive enzymes produced there. The portion of your small intestines that's removed with your stomach normally absorbs some nutrition and calories. Since this section is bypassed, the absorption of the calories doesn't happen, which contributes to your weight loss. So, I will still have my stomach pretty much all there. It's just I'm going to have a portion of my stomach bypass directly to my small intestines and that's going to be the new little pouch where all of my food and liquid will be um so that's pretty much all of the questions that i have for right now like i said i'm sure as i post more videos and do updates i'm sure you guys will have a lot more questions and all of that type of stuff and i will keep you guys updated as things go along like i said today is july 23rd uh today is day one of my pre-op diet so, you know, as of right now, I'm feeling really good. I'm probably gonna vlog this part of the experience as well because my pre-op diet is 20 long days, you guys. 20 days, okay? Uh, but I love you guys. Thank you guys for all of your questions. If you do have any other questions that I did not answer in this video, 
feel free to leave them down in the comment section and when I do my next Q&A video I will try to get yours then. If you are new to my channel welcome to Simply Food by TY. I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen thus far and if you're one of my returning subscribers well y'all know I love y'all so much and as always y'all baby stay cute and take care. Bye guys. Slaying in the kitchen. Simply food by TY. We hope that you enjoyed it. Simply food by TY. If you haven't took the time, make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Simply food.